I'd like to thank you for joining me today. We are going to continue our journey on through the book of Luke. As we go through these scriptures, we, we see that the Lord is providing us guidance for our discipleship with him. Jesus goes through here and he portrays it in many different ways, um, referencing it in different ways um, by his parables and also by the miracle he's performing while he's on this journey. We are also learning about the concepts of salvation that wasn't necessarily apparent to those at that time, but in this time, retrospectively, as we see it, we, we understand this and we can see those concepts as they speak to us. So as we continue on in Luke, we also continue to see the, the, the sin, the faith, and the du duty. So let's look at Luke chapter 19 today. So it starts out with Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. Verse 1 says, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. So Jesus is on his journey, his journey to Jerusalem. This journey has led him now to Jericho, which is not too far from Jerusalem. Um, he here, um, as he has been on this journey, we have seen him as he has been completing miracles. And we've been hearing his parables throughout Luke here. Um, once again, these, these things are just teaching us uh, about discipleship as he's with his disciples. And we are his disciples today, doing his, doing his work. This is Jesus' final journey. He is, you know, he is headed to Jerusalem to, to die on the cross for our sins. Verse 2, a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see G who Jesus was. But because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be a guest of a sinner? But Zacchaeus stood up, and said to the Lord, Lord, look, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times that amount. So he's with a tax collector. Tax collectors were despised. They were despised as traitors. They were known to be corrupt, as we can see here in that last verse. Even Zacchaeus is alluding to the corrupt practices he did. Zacchaeus was also known to be wealthy. Tax collectors, they were collaborators with the Roman. They were collecting taxes. Matthew 18, 7, well, this relates to church discipline, but gives us a feeling for how well tax collectors were liked. It says, if they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as they would a pagan or a tax collector. So we can see what category tax collectors were in in those times. They wouldn't be somebody that you would welcome into your home. You would not necessarily associate with them, and you definitely wouldn't go to their house to hang out. These people were considered the worst of the worst, just like a pagan. And then here, Jesus goes to his house. Not something that they were expecting. Nine, Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. So Jesus came. He came for everyone, not just his chosen people. He came for a Jew, he came for the Gentile. He came for the tax collector. Then after his interaction with Jesus, Zacchaeus goes on to become a disciple. The next section is titled The Parable of the Ten Minuses, which is considered units of money. 11 says, when they were 
while they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable. Because he was near Jerusalem, and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. He said, a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called ten of his servants and gave them ten units of money. Put his money to work, he said, until I come back. But his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, We do not want this man to be our king. He was made our king, however, and returned home. Then they sent the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. The first one came and said, Sir, your money has earned ten more. So we see his duties produced tenfold. Well done, my good servant, his master replied. Because you have been trustworthy in a very small manner, Take charge of ten cities, your duties, and your reward. The second came and said, Sir, your money has earned five more. His duties produced fivefold. His master answered, Take charge of five cities. Once again, his duties and his reward. You get what you give. The Lord gives you. And you get return. Then another servant came and said, Sir, here is your money. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take out what you do not put in and reap what you do not sow. His master replied, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. You knew, you knew, did you? that I am a hard man, taking out what I did not put in and reaping what I did not sow. This servant hid his duties. Why then didn't you put my money on deposit so that when I came back, I could have collected it with at least interest? What does he mean here? Hmm. He could have at least let his light shine to produce for itself, but no, He hid it. Do you hide your light? Then he said to those standing by, Take his money away from him and give it to the one who has the tenfold. No reward for hiding your duties. Sir, they said, He already has ten. He replied, I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, even that they have will be taken away. We are to accept the free gift that has been given. We are to be found doing God's work. God gives us this gift. He is a light with inside of us. We're not to hide it. We're to let it shine. We are to use that light and go out and draw others to the light to bring back tenfold what he gives us. Matthew 25, 29. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. Those who reject the Savior will be subject to his wrath and into his internal condemnation. Apply that to what's about to happen here in Jerusalem. His enemies, they don't want him to be the son of God. They They don't want him as their king. What will he do with those? He tells us here. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it to me. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Say, 
the Lord needs it. So this was the cult of the donkey. Donkeys are symbols, symbols of service, symbols of suffering, symbols of peace, and symbols of humility. This area that these animals were collected were brought for sacrifices. Jesus is replacing the animal sacrifices. 32, those who were sent ahead went on and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. And he went along, people spreading their cloaks on the road. When they came near to the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices and for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Jesus says, I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. This is prophecy being fulfilled, him entering into Jerusalem. Genesis 49, 10 and 11 says, The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he to whom it belongs shall come and the obedience of the nations shall be his. He will tether his donkey to a vine, his colt to the choicest branch. He will wash his garments in wine, his robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes will be darker than wine, his teeth whiter than milk. As he approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. They cannot see what is about to be done for them. Can we today see what has been given for us? Can the world see what's been given for it? So then he goes on to enter into the city riding the donkey. It was customary to dismount when you entered into the city. Only kings rode into the city. This is also prophecy being fulfilled. Zechariah 9.9 Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See your kings come to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, a fowl of a donkey, a humble king of peace. Enter Jerusalem. 43. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and your children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Let's look into Luke 21 for some guidance here. 20 and 22. When you see Jerusalem being sounded, surrounded by armies, you will know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those in the great city get out. And let those in the country not enter the city, for this is the time of punishment and fulfillment of what has been written. He's speaking to the, second, the time before the second coming, the second coming of Christ. When we get to chapter 21, we will go into detail and review the details of this. But for now, let's save that part for another day. But one last note here. Let's look at verse 24 in that same chapter. They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Ponder that. Now back to Jesus' journey. He has entered into Jerusalem. Now he is at the temple. In verse 45, 
When Jesus entered the temple courts, he began to drive out those who were selling. It is written, he said to them, my house will be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. This scripture is viewed in multiple different ways, and I probably won't touch on all of them. But one way is, you can tie this back to previous scripture, which is when Jesus warned about the temple being taken over by the enemies. Is it related to his first coming, what is happening then? Is it related to his second coming, when Jerusalem is no longer a Jewish temple? Is it in relation to the abomination of desolation that we hear about in Revelation and other scripture? John 2.19 says, Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. So another way, his death, his burial, and his resurrection that's about to take place. Another way is how he cleansed the temple. Was he cleansing it with humility? Was he cleansing it with anger? Some would justify their own anger because of this. We read in other Gospels that he overthrew the tables. We are put on this earth, created in God's image. We are given emotions. We are to use those appropriately and tactfully. Anger can bring about love. It can bring about change. It can bring on focus. What anger should not do is bring upon sin and evil. We anger, we need to anger in love. Or, if we look at all this together, for a Christian, is it all just one and the same? You must not let your temple become unclean. You must keep it holy. Revelation 16, 15. Look, I come like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake and remains clothed so as not to go naked and be shamefully exposed. You must keep God at the center of your temple. Your only worry should be this. Revelation 14, 9. This calls for patient endurance on the part of the people of God who keep his commandments and remain faithful to Jesus. Don't worship the beast and its image. Don't receive the mark of its name. When Jesus returns, your temple must be found clean and faithful. How does this scripture speak to you? Take some time today to ponder this. We go on. Verse 47. Every day he was teaching at the temple, but the chief priests and the teachers of the law and the leaders among them and people were trying to kill him. Jesus is teaching to you. He's teaching to your temple. Listen, learn, and grow. Know the Lord and his character. Know him when you see him. Do not be deceived. Know your God. Know that your persecution can come from many places. The world, even religious entities, can and may persecute you. Meaning those religious people who have fallen away, have been deceived by the beast. They will make sin good, and good they will call evil. Your faith will make you a target. 48. Yet they could not find any way to do it because all the people hung on his words. Hang on God's words. Spend your day in time, in scripture, and in prayer. Make sure your temple is clean. Make sure your home and your family's temple is clean. Be the disciples Jesus asked you to be. Know that he loves you. He loves you like a child. 
know his character, know he loves you. Jesus' gift is for all of us, a gift that must be accepted, not a gift to be earned. Jesus asks us, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, burdened with sin, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn from his scripture. Learn as we've learned today. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke Faith in, in him is easy, and my burden, our duty, is light. Let us take a moment here and let's listen to the first three verses of His Yoke is Easy. I found my Lord and he is mine. He won me by his love. I'll serve him all my, all years, my years of time. Sorry, technical difficulty. Serve him all the years of time and end up in the final dwelling place. His yoke is easy, his burden is light. I found it so, I found it so. His service is my sweetest delight. Best thing you ever do. He'll bless you beyond imagining. The one and only true. With him alone. His dreams of love. His love, ever. love for us as a child. Within my heart is thrown. His yoke is easy, his burden is light. I found it so, 